Hello everyone, welcome to TechTut.com. In this lecture, we are going to learn timestamp based protocol to ensure concurrency. So the first question which should arise is what is timestamp? So the answer is timestamp is used to associate time with some transaction or some event. So if I give you an example, we have Unix timestamp which is that from 1st January 1970 we started counting each second and this counter value is called as Unix timestamp. So if you want to know the current Unix timestamp here you can see this is the current time Unix timestamp and if I put 000, 000 then you can see that the date for that this this 000, 000 is 1st January 1970 right and at 0 hours 0 minutes right so the maximum granularity which we can achieve with this unix timestamp is up to second because for each second you can see it is here increasing right so this is a example of timestamp and this is unix timestamp similarly to ensure serializability we use the concept of timestamp and we associate each transaction ti with a timestamp value and we call it timestamp of ti right now this can be a system clock value or this can also be a logical counter okay fine now in this timestamp based protocol we have no deadlock no no deadlock right because there is no lock in timestamp based ordering we don't have any lock that's why there is no case of deadlock yes starvation may happen so the what is the basic idea the basic idea is that we order the transaction on the basis of their time of arrival okay and that's why we call it timestamp ordering so we order okay so it means that if transaction t1 has come first then t2 and then t3 then timestamp of t1 will be lesser than timestamp of t2 then it will be lesser than timestamp of t3 oh, t3 fine as we know that timestamp keeps on increasing so the transaction which comes first will have lesser value of timestamp right okay so if transaction t1 comes first then t2 then then t3 and if we create a schedule which has to be serializable then it will be basically equivalent to which serial schedule t1 t2 and t3 right so whatever operation whatever schedule we create using the operations of transaction t1 t2 t3 it has to be equivalent to the serial schedule which is t1 followed by t2 followed by t3 right so of course we are talking about conflict equivalent okay so it has to be conflict equivalent with the serial schedule t1 t2 and t2 followed by t3 okay now this timestamp based protocol the algorithm which we follow make sure that for each data item the conflicting operation or the conflicting operations are in order such that they are not violating the serializability order okay so we have to ensure using this timestamp that whatever is the conflicting orders operation in this serial schedule right that has to be maintained in any schedule which we propose okay fine now to ensure this we have two types of timestamp associated to each data item so this one is the first one is read timestamp of data item x and another one is write timestamp so for each data item x what do we do we maintain two timestamp okay one is read timestamp another one is write timestamp fine now what is this read timestamp so read timestamp is timestamp of youngest transaction which has performed 
read operation over variable x right so what do I mean by saying this is let's say on this variable x okay there are multiple transactions t1 t2 t3 who has performed read operation okay read operation or I should be writing basically r1 r2 r3 right then we will check which one of these three transaction is youngest right and we know that the youngest transaction will have largest timestamp value okay so that timestamp value will be read timestamp value of this x okay so this is what I mean by saying read timestamp now let's understand next one which is write timestamp similarly write timestamp is write timestamp is also the timestamp of youngest transaction which has performed right on this database item x so let's say this is x now if I have this write operation by transaction 1 again write by 2 write by 3 write by 4 now what will be the value of this write timestamp for this variable x so write timestamp for this variable x will be the largest timestamp value among these transactions okay so as I'm saying this is the timestamp of youngest transaction it is clear and we know that the youngest transaction will have largest timestamp value youngest transaction will have largest timestamp value so to understand this let's say uh, we have a variable x right uh, and now let's say times uh, first transaction t1 comes so we will assign it a timestamp value equal to let's say 1 then t2 comes then we will assign 2 t3 comes we will assign 3 so you can see that as timestamp value increases with the time so the youngest or the latest transaction will have largest timestamp value okay so this is right timestamp and now in next lecture we will start by learning what is basic timestamp ordering protocol so basically in timestamp ordering we have basic timestamp ordering and then we have Thomas Wright rule so in next lecture we will understand basic timestamp ordering so see you in the next lecture thanks for watching